The great thing about buying a new television or a set-top box such as a DVD player, a gaming system, or maybe a cable or satellite box is getting to connect them all up. Or don't you think so? Well, hey, if all this connection stuff and these things make you feel a little intimidated, that's no problem. I'm here today to take you through all the connections from the best video connections to the most basic audio connections, figure them out, help you understand them, tell you where to connect them, and just make things a lot easier for you. Let's take a look. The first three connections that we have here that I'm going to talk about are going to refer to digital video. Okay? These are going to be three cables that will be used to hook up devices like gaming systems, digital high definition cable boxes, satellite receivers, and upscaling DVD players. The first wire in the digital video connection is called HDMI and this is probably the best cable available today. HDMI is a single one wire solution that carries both digital video and digital audio. The digital video it supports is 480p, 720p, 1080i, and 1080p. The digital audio that it supports is up to 7.1 digital audio sound. This is a one wire connection that basically if you hook up to your set top box and you plug into the HDMI input on your TV set, select the right input on the TV, turn the devices on, you have a great picture and great sound from one wire. The next cable in our digital video connection line is more of an adapter cable. You'll notice that the ends on them are a little bit different, unlike the HDMI. The reason why is that some of the digital set-top boxes, DVD players, cable boxes, may have an output on them called DVI. The DVI output on here is a fantastic connection. It still gives you the great digital picture, 480p, 720p, 1080i, and even 1080p, but the only thing it doesn't support is audio, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So what this adapter does is it converts DVI over to HDMI, and what you'll do is you'll plug this into your set-top box, the HDMI input into your TV, choose the right input on the TV, turn them on, and you should get great picture. But remember, you still need to hook up the audio, and we'll talk about that in a second. The last cable I want to talk about in the digital video connections is called component video. This is more of a crossover cable and I'll explain more about that in a second. Notice the colors on here, red, green, and blue. These are made for easy connection to your display device and your set-top box. On the back of a progressive scan DVD player, your cable box, your satellite receiver, and even your gaming system, you'll find the colors red, green, and blue. Simply match them up on the set-top box, match them up on the television, turn them both on, and you got a great picture. Now this supports digital video 480p, 720p, 1080i, up to 1080p through these great cables. Now notice there's no audio on here and I'll talk about that in a second. I mentioned that this was a crossover cable also. That's because this same connector, component video, red, green, and blue, also supports analog component video 480i. So technically this is the start of our analog video connection also. The next analog video connector is called S-Video. S-Video is a simple one-wire connection that basically plugs into devices like cable boxes, VCRs, gaming systems, camcorders, and from those devices, you plug into the S-Video input on the TV set, make sure you got the right input on the TV, turn both the devices on, and you got a great picture. Guess what you're missing, though? That's right, audio. You'll need to hook up audio with this, and again, we'll get to that. The next connector is called composite video. Typically sold the way you see it here, bundled with left and right audio, the composite video is a one wire system that goes from your set top box, like a DVD player, cable box, satellite receiver, game system, into the composite video input on the TV set. Turn it on, change the input to support composite video, and you get a great picture. Also, as I mentioned, it's bundled with audio, connect it up and you'll get a great sound too. The last wire is my favorite because it's again back to simple one wire solution is your RF connection. This goes way back. The RF wire or the coaxial connection on here goes from your set top box like a VCR or a cable box. You screw it in and it goes right into the back of the TV set on the coax input and you've got a great picture. Also if you're trying to tune in maybe a high definition signal with an outside antenna or rabbit ears, this is the same wire that you would use for that. This delivers picture and sound on one wire. Well, now that we've talked about the digital video connections, we've talked about the three wires, HDMI, the DVI, HDMI adapter, component video for digital video. We've talked about the video connections for analog, from the component video, remember the crossover cable, 
S video, composite video, and the RF or coax cable, let's talk about audio now. The first audio connection I want to point out is called your digital coax. This right here has got an orange color on it. When you hook up your audio from, say, your set-top box, like a cable box or a DVD player, you'll notice the back there, the, the output is probably orange. It could be labeled digital coax or SPDIF. Basically, what you do is you plug this into the set-top box, check to see that your television, or in this case, you may be plugging your audio into a, an audio-video receiver, surround sound type receiver. When you hook those up and check your settings in your manual, you'll get great audio sound, up to 7.1 with this connection right here. The next connector is called your optical cable. The same high quality audio that you get from the one we just talked about is also being able to be transferred through the optical cable. The optical cable output on the back of a set-top box, if you've ever looked on there, may be a little beam of red light. What you do is you plug this into that light, find the digital audio input on your TV if it has it, more than likely it'll be an audio video receiver that I mentioned earlier, plug those in, turn them on, check the manual and settings on how to correctly do this, and you'll get great audio, up to 7.1 sound. The last one I want to talk about is the old tried and true. This is the uh, analog left and right, also notice the color on it, red and white audio. Most set-top boxes to date all have the left and right audio out, and they could complement any of the video connections that we just talked about that do not have audio. So all you do is on your set-top box, find the left and right out, on your display device or even your AV receiver, your home theater receiver, plug this in. Again, check the manual and the settings to get the inputs and the outputs correct. Turn it on and you'll get great audio sound there. Well, that wasn't so bad. I mean, take a look at all the connections we've looked at. We've got the digital video connections for television. We've got the HDMI, the DVI HDMI adapter, the component video. And then we talk about the analog video connections, from the component video to the S video, the composite video, and the RF or the coaxial input. And then the basic audio connections from digital to analog. I mean, that's pretty simple hookups, right? I mean, when you look at your picture and you look at your sound and you get that great experience of audio video, I mean, that's what you want, right? And with Philips, simplicity is a great audio video experience.